Welcome to Mr. Brown's Basement, a channel devoted to sharing the craft of repairing, restoring, and modifying vintage electronic gear and other random stuff. I can't stand it when electronics fails before its time. This bulb failed after a couple hundred hours of operation when in fact it's supposed to last nine years based on three hours per day, blah, blah, blah. A little bit of background. These things are cheap, like maybe 50 cents for this, but they use a lot of power because really what they are is a heater. Most of the energy they use is given off in the form of heat, not in light. These are very much more expensive, but they use much less energy, like maybe a fifth, but they're not worth it if they don't last. And this one did not last. I work all night and all he pays is a few cents. So let's take it apart and see what failed. This process is going to be destructive, so there's not going to be much left of it when I'm finished. You are very cruel, Mr. Brown. Oh, it had an accident. It fell into my vise. Here's the diffuser. Here are the LEDs. Each of those yellow rectangles is an LED, and there are two chips called drivers. There are four other components which I'm going to examine in a moment, not yet. These chips are BP5132H, which are driver chips. The fact that there are two and two sets of resistors says that there are actually two arrays independently controlled. So there's this array, which, is con which are controlled by this chip and using those resistors, and this array using this chip and these resistors. And the fact that the whole thing failed, so no light comes from it at all, suggests that whatever failed is in common with both, and that this section here is okay. Oh my goodness, another whoops. This bulb met my screwdriver. On the bottom there is a aluminum disc with a small receptacle which supplies power to this. That white blob is thermal grease, which is supposed to keep it cool because it's thermally bonded with this, which takes the heat away. Obviously the power for this whole thing comes from here. Another accident happened. The rest of the aluminum, it's a heat sink, fell out. What a shame. Perhaps it had something to do with my screwdriver. Again. Inside we see the whole power supply, which appears to be a capacitor and something else. Can't tell yet. It must be this bulb's unlucky day. This met my left and right hand, and it just fell out. What's on this board? There's a capacitor. 200 volt, 22 microfarad. A resistor, 0.47 ohms. And there is a bridge rectifier on the bottom and a resistor on the bottom. I did not reverse engineer this like Big Clive might. I just made inferences based on what I saw on the board. Here's the typical application diagram from the manufacturer. And here's the circuit that I found in the bulb. They replaced the fuse with a very small value resistor, probably meant to go open in the case of surge or malfunction. And where there was no capacitor before, they've added an electrolytic capacitor to reduce the ripple on the DC, plus a bleeder resistor that would make sure that if somebody turned out the light, it would not stay on for any significant length of time as the capacitor discharged. They took out a resistor, diode, and capacitor from the circuit, and though this driver is supposed to be dimmable, this bulb was specifically marked not dimmable. I'm guessing that it has something to do with the removal of those three components. If you have an idea what those components are for, please leave it in the comments section below. Finally, they left in the two current sense resistors, a 20 ohm and a 30 ohm. So what probably failed? I'm betting that this resistor failed, but we'll find out. Oh, the moral of the story is don't bet because I'm putting power into it and I'm getting DC out. So this is not where the problem is. Let's try it this way. I've got a variac, in other words, a variable voltage transformer connected up to a power cord, which is connected up to some alligator clips, carefully, to this power supply board. And there is the LED board. It's not dimmable, but let's see what happens. And yes, I've got a fuse in the circuit. 26 volts, about 50 volts, yeah, it's lighting, wow. I can't light it too long. It will overheat because it's operating without a heat sink. Oh, 
I think I may have found the problem. This wire here is not soldered or it's just wrapped around the base. So that may have been where it failed. So the whole bulb wasn't getting any power. How tragic. Another mishap. Here's the plastic and here is the wire. No, it's not attached. It was never soldered. It was just wrapped around the base and either through a little oxidation or frequent heating and cooling cycles, it didn't make good contact with the shell and that's why the bulb didn't light. For an extra few cents, they could have soldered this onto the base and the bulb would still work. What a waste. The board has changed color because of the heat that probably would eventually have roasted the capacitor, but that didn't happen. What happened was it failed because of a poor connection. Not impressed. Well, there you have it. A bulb that never should have failed, but did because of poor construction quality. So that wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to Mr. Brown's Basement for more interesting and unusual videos. I'm okay, really.